in today's field test, we're heading into the desert of far west Texas to meet up with Theron Humphrey and his dog, Maddie. Along the way, we'll be shooting around the towns of Marfa and Terlingua and taking off-road vehicles into Big Bend National Park to camp. We'll be getting hands-on experience in a range of different shooting situations to find out how well Sony's new flagship A7R Mark II performs in this unique and beautiful part of America. Hello? My name is Darren Humphrey. I was born and raised in Pollocksville, North Carolina, and I'm a photographer. I travel around the U.S., document it, and told the story of one person a day, every day for a whole year. Around the same time, Instagram had launched, and it was a really new app, and my buddy was like, hey, you should pick up this app and uh, you know post photos to it, and I think if you just interject like this personal narrative of who you are and what you're doing, it'll make the project even more valuable because people have something more to connect to. So I was just posting pictures of me and my dog, Maddie, drive around the U.S. in our truck. Awesome, love it. Thank you so much. Enjoy your sale. So this is the Sony A7R Mark II, which is very significant for a couple of reasons. The most obvious is its sensor. It's a full-frame sensor, and it's a BSI, backside illuminated sensor, which is the largest of its kind in any camera in the world. It's 42 million pixels, so it's very high resolution, and it has 399 phase detection AF points on it. What that means is that compared to the original A7R, focus is faster, it's more precise, and it's capable of tracking moving subjects. As well as stills, this camera also shoots 4K video in two modes. We're gonna try and run through all of these different settings. We're gonna try and get a good idea of what it's like at low ISO, high ISO, what the video image quality looks like, what the still raw image quality looks like, and hopefully we'll get some great pictures. The day before meeting up with Theron, we stopped on the outskirts of town to check out Prada Marfa. Tumbleweed. <laughs> this is a local art installation. It's not a real Prada store. I'm gonna take some still images of this while the light is really nice. And um, we're also gonna take some slider shots comparing the different 4K modes of the A7R2. One of the most common requests we've had from viewers of our field test series has been for more video footage from the camera we're reviewing. So we shot this video entirely on the A7R Mark II, recording both internally and externally via an Atomos Shogun 4K recorder. The A7R Mark II sensor has enough resolution to shoot 4K video using an almost full-frame crop, or in a Super 35 crop mode. Super 35 is similar in area to APS-C, and in this mode the A7R II is actually oversampling, which means cleaner video output. After Prada Marfa, we headed to Hotel El Cosmico to get some shots of the grounds. Our first task was to set up a time-lapse using the optional app which can be purchased from Sony's Play Memories service. With our slider moving and variable ND filter in place, we programmed the camera to shoot one JPEG frame every three seconds for roughly 20 minutes. One of the major selling points of the A7R Mark II, like all large sensor mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras, is its relatively small size and weight compared to an equivalent DSLR. Shooting at sunset gave us the opportunity to test the A7R Mark II's dynamic range in RAW mode. Images from the 42 megapixel sensor are stunningly detailed, but as we've come to expect, there's also huge latitude for exposure adjustment. It's possible to perform very aggressive shadow lifting at base ISO with little penalty in terms of noise. Before we headed to bed, we left the camera overnight, shooting one more time-lapse of the stars moving across the night sky, this time shooting raw. The next morning, we headed into downtown Marfa to rendezvous with Theron and Maddie before leaving for the desert. We came out to Big Bend National Park. It's one of the uh, few national parks I've never been to before, and it's actually the least visited national park. All right, Theron, so we've pulled off the road uh, just ahead of our campsite. We're sort of heading out there. Um, there's a picture you want to take, right? As we were driving down the dirt road at, you know, 20 miles an hour, there's all this dust that was following us, and it was like blanketing onto the desert landscape. And uh, with the light coming through, it's just, you know, inspiring, worth stopping and checking it out. Whoa. 
really went for. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, that's way nicer, huh? With film, you would expose to the highlights and then you would develop for the shadows. And the cool thing about the Sony camera is you're doing the same thing. So what I fell into practice was like, how much detail do I want to remain in the highlights? And then I would expose for that because you can bring the image into Lightroom and you can just open up all the shadows and all the details there and it looks great. One thing that has really impressed us in our studio testing is the A7R Mark II's low light abilities. The autofocus system remains impressively responsive and very accurate in even very low light, even moonlight, as we found out when camping in the desert. Now last night was the eclipse and we missed that because of cloud coverage, we just caught the very end of it. But the moon just came up and it's incredibly big. So we're going to try and get a couple of shots off the roof of the, um, the truck here with the 70 to 200 mil. 200mm is not as long as we need it to be, ideally, but we can use the extra resolution in the camera sensor to crop right down. So hopefully, we can still get a good shot, which is nice, a nice surprise. At ISO 12800, image quality from the A7R Mark II's RAW files is still very good, and images clean up nicely with a bit of post-processing. This kind of flexibility is highly impressive, and still unusual for a mirrorless system. I think my mantra in life is put myself in situations where I have to work for other people as little as possible to give myself the most time to create what I love and what I think is important. And freelance provides that opportunity, but it is a hustle. It's a lot of work to stay on top of it. The most important part about photography would never be the technical attributes of the camera and the lenses. It's always gonna be what you point your camera at. I think you should always equip yourself with the best tools available, the best tools that you can afford, but you should always go out into the world and be conscious of what you're pointing your camera at and wanting to celebrate it and honor it. And that is what people are gonna talk about. After packing up our camp, we headed off into the far reaches of the park's southern border to brave both the heat and the frankly reckless driving of our director, a native Texan himself. During a brief pit stop for water and motion sickness pills, we set up a shot to test the A7R Mark II's lock-on AF tracking. One thing I think feel like was really important was having him turn his headlights on the Jeep, uh, just so he pops off the landscape a little bit more. But it's a fun test, and the subject tracking worked actually pretty amazingly well for that. One thing I really like about the A7R Mark II actually is the viewfinder. Very high magnification, 0.7 times magnification. It's really big, it's really crisp and detailed. It's very, very immersive. It's one of the best viewfinders, if not the best, in terms of just the experience of any mirrorless camera that I've used. I definitely wouldn't come here in June or July. I mean, it was pretty much uh, the end of September and it was still pretty dang hot in the day. But man, come sunset, it's just like the world just becomes this most epic, beautiful, humbling place ever. Oh, the sun's so good now, let's do this. That golden hour is really more like golden 20 minutes when you get down to it. I do have that extra resolution, so not that I wanna be sloppy with my compositions, but I do have way more uh, room to still have enough enough file size if I do have to crop it. The images with Maddie take a lot of work. You know, shooting her for five years definitely has uh, made it easier because like I know like what facial expressions I like and I, I know how to get her excited and I know her limits as well. You okay, girl? Stay, Maddie. There we go. Look at her, Becker. I think we just got the shot of the uh, of the day, certainly. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Turns out dogs can't sit in camp chairs for all that long after all.
I've enjoyed shooting with the A7R Mark II the past few days. It's had a few features that I didn't think were gonna be that important, but I've really come to enjoy. First is the tilting, articulating rear screen. I mean, it's great for shooting low. And the other one is the electronic viewfinder. I really love being able to see the exposure through the viewfinder. But you know, what I'm most impressed with is the dynamic range and the megapixels. In case I do have to crop in, or if I don't compose an image perfectly. I was pretty hesitant to get into the, the F4 lenses, but I think in the end, I'm gonna be happy for the size trade-off on those. And then when I really do need to blow out the background, you got the 35 1.4, which is just like phenomenal lens. Overall, like I really do like the camera and I'm gonna shoot with it a lot and I'm pumped to have it in my quiver. We said our goodbyes to Theron and Maddie and headed back to Marfa to take a few more shots. So we've come out to the train tracks just outside of Marfa. We had the most amazing sunset. We shot a few, um, few pictures earlier on. The sun's gone down now, but the light is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's a little bit too dark now to shoot handheld, really. It'd be risky. So we switched to a tripod and uh, we're just gonna shoot down these train tracks here right into what's left of the sunset. If we use electronic first curtain shutter, we're already using a tripod here and self timer. We'll be able to eliminate all causes of vibration so we'll get the absolute maximum out of the sensor's resolution. And the only reason I'm taking three is just to eliminate any chance of random vibrations at all through these, hopefully not through these tracks because that would mean a train's coming, but through the ground. So it's the end of uh, day four, pretty much the end of the shoot now. It's been amazing, this is probably the most varied of the shoots that we've done. And I've had a lot of fun working with the A7R too, and I think um, Theron has as well. You know, photography is a window, and you can either talk about the pane of glass, which is like all the technical parts of the craft, the, the, the gear, or you can look through the window at the world. And I think that's when photography becomes most interesting and most compelling when you're talking about what's on the outside of the window.